Good day, everyone. Welcome to another meeting. Is everybody inside the platform already? Yes, po, madam. Yes, po. Well, that's great to hear. I hope everyone is alive and kicking for another fun learning awaits all of us. By the way, since everybody is already inside the class classroom, may I request everyone to please turn on your cameras for a photo op that will serve as your attendance. One, two, three, smile. It's nice seeing everybody smiling, so keep that smile until the end. By the way, am I clearly visible and audible? Very yes, visible, po. Very good, all set. So we could now officially start our class. To start with, let me request Miss Novi Sanuan to lead the prayer. Novi. Okay po, ma'am. Okay, let us put ourselves in the most holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for this chance and opportunity that we are all gathered here in one platform for another virtual discussion. Father God, also we come to you today asking for your guidance, knowledge, wisdom, and support. May you bless all of us here and may this virtual discussion be fruitful. And this is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Novi San Juan. Now we will now officially start our class. Welcome to EL 106, Teaching and Assessment of Literature Studies. Focusing on language-based approach to teaching literature. I am Girlie Bermuda Sinate. I am Clarice Caryon Kaholo. Your facilitators for today. Now, I will leave the screen to my partner, Clarice, to introduce to us our lesson and objectives. Clarice, take it away. Thank you, partner. Now, I will read to you our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to first, define language-based approach and second, design language-based activities in teaching literature. At the end of this discussion, you are expected to meet our learning objectives. So I hope everyone will take note and please try to participate for us to achieve our learning objectives. So now I will give the floor to my partner, Ms. Gurley, to introduce to us our motivating activity. Partner, please take it away. Thank you, Clarice. I hope everybody really take notes of our le learning objectives so that we will meet it at the end of the lesson. So, I can see that everybody are craving for another exciting activity. So, here is an activity for all of you. Also known as share your insights. In this activity, students with thoughts and ideas are the highlight of this activity. So, here we go. Read and interpret the saying by Ezra Pound. Then answer the questions that follows. Who can volunteer to read the saying? Opo. I can see that Novi is volunteering and also Franco is raising his hand. But the lucky one that I will choose is Franco. Franco? You may now read the saying by Ezra Pound. Great literature is simply language charged with meaning to the utmost possible degree by Ezra Pound. Thank you for reading, Franco. My question to you is, what do you think is the meaning of the saying or what does the meaning tries to say? Um, based on my understanding, the code simply means that um, every literature is language itself. It just happens that um, 
the language used in the literature is a more complex language with expanded meaning, more creative, and, ex and expresses, um, to portray a scene, expresses emotion, and can communicate with its readers. That's what I've understand on the quote by Ezra Pound. Very well said, Franco. It just means that every literature, especially great literature, is language itself. It just happens that the language there is an expanded language or a more complex language, creative language, in order to portray a story, a plot, a play, or a novel. So probably we could see there that literature and language has a relationship. So now the question is, what do you think is the relationship between language and literature? Explain your idea. Very participative class. I can see that a lot of you are raising your hands. But I will only cater one. Miss Marche, what do you what think is the relationship between, between language, language and literature? Explain your Thank idea. You. We all know that literature is all about expressing our feelings through writing, such as constructing poems and our writing. And while on the other hand, language is uh, connect us to our real world. And I think the relationship between literature and language is that literature is a kind of art in which language is the significant material and that they cannot uh, be separate with each other. Thank you, Marchi. Good points from Marchi. Now let me hear from Miss Novi San Juan, who also raises her hand a while ago. Miss Novi, what do you think is the relationship between language and literature? Okay, for me, I think the relationship of the two is that they are intertwined when it, when it corresponds when when it comes to their uses like for example um we can use language to make a literature and also through literature we can also uh, identify different languages thank you novi another good points from novi so novi and marchi are both correct language and literature are intertwined to each other Language makes up a literature, and literature is made up of language. Now let us proceed to the second question. Can we use language in learning and teaching literature? Why or why not? Since language and literature has a relationship, so can we already use it in teaching and learning literature? You may raise your hand again. I can see that Christine Zibrera is raising her hand. Christine, share your thoughts. For me po, yes po, because language and literature are intertwined to each other. Thus, we can use language in learning and teaching literature. Also, because the language or the vocabularies, grammar, sentences, paragraphs, and metaphors make up the whole meaning of life or the literature. So if we study all of it, we will also understand the literature itself po. Definitely, of course, we can use language in learning and teaching literature because they are intertwined to each other. We could use language to understand literature and at the same time, use this language in learning and teaching literature to continuously improve our language skills in different contexts. So thank you very much for all your participation. There lies our topic for today, which is language-based approach. It means to say that it focuses to language in teaching and learning literature. To dig deeper, my partner Clarice will explain to you how to use language in learning and teaching literature. Clarice, your turn. Okay, thank you, partner. For our abstraction, let's learn. May I call Mr. Olarte to please read what is language-based approach? Okay. <clears throat> what is language-based approach? Language-based approach is a broad approach that encompasses a wide range of goals and techniques. 
in, in, in general, this approach emphasizes the integration of language and literature inside the classroom, as this will aid students in accomplishing their primary goal of improving their knowledge and ability in literature. Okay, thank you, Mr. Olarte. So, language-based approach class, this is an approach that mainly uses literature as its way to teaching students. Examples of literature are Romeo and Juliet, Beowulf, and for also in Filipino literature, we have Ibong Adarna, El Filibusterismo, or No Limitangere. So those are examples of literature that can be used in teaching. And what's the situation here? So most likely more on reading. As I have mentioned, language-based approach also includes techniques and procedures. So here is again my partner, Gurley, to discuss to you the techniques and procedures of language-based approach. Partner? Thank you, Clarice. Techniques and procedures. Techniques and procedures that are more directly focused with the study of the literary text itself are included in a language-based approach to using literature. The goal is to give students the tools they need to comprehend text and make competent critical judgment about them. One of them is the study of stylistics. In other words, language-based approach makes use of techniques and procedures, which help students understand literary text. These techniques and procedures focuses on studying literature. This could also be considered as tools in order for the students to understand the literary text and also critic that certain text. So one example is the study of stylistics. To expand what is the study of stylistics in the classroom, again, I will give the floor to my partner, Clarice. Clarice, your turn again. Okay, thanks again, partner. So for stylistics in the classroom, may I have Ms. San Juan to please read? Stylistics in the classroom. Stylistics is the study of a text's linguistic qualities in order to determine how the text meaning is transferred. It's a method that focus, focuses on how particular specific ways of employing language in literary text might improve a student's language comprehension. Finally, it focuses on an approach that can assist students in developing a more sensitive comprehension and appreciation of literary text. Okay, thank you, Ms. San Juan. Now, stylistics in the classroom class. We are talking here about the different styles of literature provided by the teacher that is appropriate to a certain group of students. So you shouldn't give students anything. Or if you want the students to read something more advanced, make sure it is relevant to them, okay? For example, elementary students, you can have them read stories such as fables. And for high school students, more on advanced literature. Now, let's move to the two main objectives of stylistics in the classroom. Partner, your turn. Thank you. Thank you. Here are the two main objectives. Number one, enable students to make meaningful interpretation of the text itself. Number two, expand students' overall language understanding and awareness. Although the goal of adopt adopting stylistics is to assist students in reading and studying literature more effectively, it also provides good language practice. In short, stylistics in the classroom aims to help students understand or interpret the text. And also, it will aim to improve the students' language skills and understanding so that they become more effective towards good language practice. So that's it for the main objectives of stylistics in the classroom. If they have their main objectives, so we could already see that they are advantageous to know what are the advantages of the stylistics in the classroom, I will welcome again, Ms. Clarice, my partner, your turn again. So again, partner, thank you. Now, 
let's have the advantages of stylistics in the classroom. So, Ms. Librero, will you please read to us the advantages? Yes, Bo. So, the advantages. Stylistics has the advantage of demonstrating how specific linguistic forms function to transmit specific meanings to language learners. Stylistic analysis can also be used to compare different types of texts, literary and non-literary, to see how they fulfill various societal purposes. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ibrero. Okay, class, so in using a specific style in the classroom, students will be able to spot and compare the different type of text, whether it is literary or non-literary. So for example, students might be required to match a character's description in a novel with someone given in a letter or recommendation or a medical form. Example, you will have your students read a novel. For instance, he or she will encounter a text or letter that has the same description, then can match both that it has a relation or that they are related to each other. The students will then be able to examine how these texts differ and the reasons for this difference. The teaching of literature can thus be integrated more fully into the classroom since literary texts can be studied alongside other kinds of texts. So through using some styles, students are able to identify the difference. Now, let's move to the advantages of language-based approach, which will be elaborated by my partner, Gurley. Thank you. If stylistics in the classroom, which is a technique or a procedure in language-based approach, has advantages, of course, language-based approach itself has its advantages. So here are its advantages. First, excellent opportunity for classroom discussion. Of course, it is because language-based approach encourages a lot of discussion for it is dealing with language, a vogue, a vogue thing. So when we talk about language, we involve interpreting, analyzing, comprehending, and of course, appreciating the language, which cannot be done by a per one person only. It involves a lot of heads brainstorming to come up to a conclusion. Second, Focus genuinely interesting and motivating topics. Class, if literature, studying literature is already an interesting topic. So if we incorporate language in studying literature, then it becomes more interesting and motivating or it becomes genuinely interesting and motivating. For instance, getting the metaphor or understanding the metaphor in a text, which is a language-based approach, we will be able to point out or picture out what is really happening in that certain literature and relate to it. So interesting and motivating, right? Let's proceed to the third one. Gives a wide range of styles and registers, also known as grammatical variation and vocabulary. So studying literature through language-based approach, we will be able to point out or learn a lot more of new vocabs or new words um, different sentence structures, um, word formation, and different patterns in the paragraph that is used in different speech, speech contexts. Lastly, offers multiple interpretation. Obviously, studying literature through language-based approach offers multiple interpretation. We will come up with a lot of interpretation in hand. It just matters to the person or the one interpreting that certain literary text. And that's an advantage of language-based approach because we will be able to see the multi-sidedness of the situation and expand our knowledge and ideas in order to come up with an analysis. So that would be all for the advantages of language-based approach. Indeed, language-based approach is very advantageous. So if it is advantageous class, then it is also very important to us individuals and to the society. So to discuss the importance of language-based approach, my partner Clarice again will explain to you.
So now let us know what is the importance of language-based approach. So Ms. Dalompines, will you please read to us what is its importance? This approach is considered to be one of the best for teaching literature because it focuses on the aesthetic value of one's literary work. This method raises linguistic awareness in the classroom. Literature is one of the media for the students to express their personal opinions, feelings, and emotions. Students were intended to increase their language proficiency by being exposed to the target language using this approach. The teacher should be the primary guide in implementing this technique in the classroom and increasing students' linguistic awareness. This will encourage the students to utilize new terms on a regular basis, allowing them to enhance their language skills. Okay, Ms. Dalompines, thank you for reading. So for the importance of language-based approach, this is really important because it will widen students' appreciation when it comes to literature. This will expand their exposure and it will be easy for them to learn the language. Because they were able to read this, it will widen their capacity to talk in that language also. So talking is also relevant to the importance, just like when you are sharing your insights, right class? So that is how significant language-based approach to literature is. Now let's have our conclusion, partner. Thank you, partner. Indeed, language-based approach is very important. In conclusion, the overall aim of language-based approach to using literature is to let the students derive the benefits of communicative and other activities for language improvement within the context of suitable works of literature. All the teacher needs to do is to keep a balance between literature and language and select activities and tasks and present them confidence. In short, language-based approach incorporates language and literature in learning and teaching literature for the students to understand literature and also improves their language skills to be used in different contexts. And then it is only the teacher's responsibility or role to keep the balance between language and literature so that students will be able to learn language with confidence. So that would be all for language-based approach. I hope you learned a lot about language-based approach. Any more questions, clarifications, or suggestions? None so far. None so far. Oh, and so far, po. So very good. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. Now, since you already understand the language-based approach, we could now proceed to the activities wherein you can apply your understanding about language-based approach. My partner, Clarice, will give you an overview to the activities that you will be doing. Clarice? Okay, partner. So, class. For our application, task one, bleed a pen. Direction, you will write an essay in no less than 150 words defining language-based approach in your own words. So be guided with the rubrics on the next slide and you will submit your output in the blackboard. And here is our writing rubrics. And for our task two, I'm a teacher. Direction again, imagine that you are already an English teacher and you will be teaching literature in grade nine. You are going to design a language-based activities that you are going to apply. So that is worth 15 points class. Then after you will submit your output in the blackboard. So first activity, you have starter. Then you are going to write the details of the activity. And second activity, reinforcer. 
And for the third activity, challenger. And this is our references. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening and participating. We are already in the end of first slide. Congratulations. Let's give everybody a virtual applause. <laughs> Congratulations. Once again, I am Gurley Bermodis Inate. And I am Clarice Garion Kaholo. Saying, have a great day, everyone, and keep safe. You may now leave the platform. God bless everyone. Goodbye, Goodbye ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, po, Madam Inate and Madam Kaholo. Thank you also for being with us. Thank you, po.